Thank you. Welcome to the City of Cadillac. This is the Code of Ethics Board meeting uh, this morning. Uh, it is December 12, 2013, 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, Sandy, when you are ready, if you could do a roll call, that would be great. City Manager Marcus Pecha. Here. City Attorney Mike Palmier. Here. Human Resources Coordinator Linda Kent. Here. Thank you. Uh, we are all here and we do have a quorum. Uh, we do have an agenda before us. Uh, may I have a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy? Petra? Yes. Omir? Yes. Kent? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next item is approval of minutes of the special meeting that was held on December 3rd, 2013. Um, are there any Changes, revisions that may be necessary. I think I'll take a look. to the uh, ethics board's hearing procedures um, as an attachment, mm -hmm. but they're not attached to the copy that I have, so we uh, we need to make sure that there is a copy attached to those. What, what section do you see that? That's under uh, second paragraph under board items on the December 3rd mm -hmm. minutes. Do you have anything? No. Sandy, can you add the attachment when you skip <coughs> Um Is there a motion to accept with the uh, amendment of adding the attachment? I motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Support. Sandy? Gotcha. Yes. Here. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, this is now an opportunity for public comments. It is requested uh, the comment time be limited to three minutes. Okay. Seeing and hearing none. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Please come forward. Where would uh, where would we like? Does the court? Do you need the audio on this? Right now. No. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sure. It's just okay. It's by the book. Manager Pecchia, Mr. Barrister, Linda, I appreciate this opportunity very much, and uh, I would like to compliment you, uh, Manager Pecchia, on the teamwork that you have developed within your team. Some time ago, we had in our community probably uh, one of the most important issues that comes to the community every two years and that is uh, the election of our leader. Within your team, a group got involved in that very important issue. And I compliment you for that because it's so hard to get team members to get involved, especially in important issues. This team not only got involved, but they chose to act publicly by putting a notice in the media. Now, 
let's suppose that that act enticed voters to get out and vote. And let's even suppose that that act enticed those voters to pull a particular lever, vote for a particular candidate. And let's suppose that that influenced the results of the election. Again, I congratulate you because to have part of your team influence the results of something that important shows leadership, shows, shows tremendous abilities. Now let's suppose that that act had nothing to do with the election. Let's suppose it didn't influence a voter, and of course if it didn't influence a voter, it didn't influence how they voted. But on that notice is your logo. And not only is your logo there, but the words working together are adjacent to the logo. I can't compliment you enough to have people on your team caring enough about your project that they would put your logo on their notice. How I would love to be able to have my logo on every notice that every team member I have puts out. For those three things, I can't compliment you enough. Congratulations. In closing, I would hope that the joy and happiness of the holiday season is with all of you that are here throughout the new year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Bob, for the record, if you could just take your name and address. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm Bob Meyer. Catalan? Yes. Thank you. Are there any other additional public comments at this point? Okay. If not, I'll close public comments uh, and we'll move on to uh, board items. There is uh, board item A, uh, hearing regarding complaint that alleges a violation of the Code of Ethics by an employee. There are some prepared remarks that I am going to read now into the record. <coughs> and if everyone is ready, um, Marie. Did you want this recorded? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please just bear with me as I put my head down to, to read these remarks. I apologize if it occurs. I'm, that looking forward. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, this is a hearing in regards to a complaint against uh, Todd Golnick. Uh, these are the introductory remarks uh, by me, the presiding officer of this ethics board. Uh, as I mentioned before, thank you again uh, for attending this special meeting of the Code of Ethics Board of the City of Cadillac. Uh, notice of this special meeting was provided in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. Uh, and the purpose, of course, of this special meeting is to hold a hearing on a complaint that alleges a violation of the Code of Ethics by an employee. This special meeting is being recorded by a court reporter. Um, we have provided a copy of uh, our agenda. Uh, and we are obviously following that agenda. Uh, item one was approval. Item two uh, was approval of our minutes. Uh, we just went through public comments, and now we're, we're on to our, our single board item, which is the hearing itself. Uh, as, as we conduct this hearing, this hearing is being held pursuant to Section 2-391 of the City of Cadillac Code of Ethics, which does provide a uh, respondent with notice and an opportunity to be heard in response to a complaint. On or about November 15, 2013, a complaint was filed with the Code of Ethics Board by Douglas Melma. The complaint alleges that a city employee, Todd Galnick, violated the City Code of Ethics by, among other things, using the City of Cadillac's logo in connection with a political campaign. At a public meeting held on December 3rd, 2013, the Ethics Board adopted general hearing procedures for the conduct of the hearing. 
A copy of those procedures was given to Mr. Melnick. Generally speaking, the procedures will be as follows. The Code of Ethics Board has selected me, the City Manager, Marcus Pecha, to serve as presiding officer of this hearing. Uh, I will certainly do my best to maintain order, and I have the authority to change the order of proofs and the examination of witnesses for the convenience of the parties. The hearing is being recorded, as you all see, uh, by a court reporter, uh, and we do ask you to please speak clearly and answer yes or no out loud, rather than nodding or shaking your head, in order to ensure a clear record. After this summary of the procedures, I will read the complaint and summarize the Ethic Board's initial conclusion that there is a reasonable basis to believe that the respondent has violated the Ethics Code. The respondent, Mr. Galnick, and the complainant, Mr. Melema, or their attorneys, will then have an opportunity to make a brief introductory statement. Any member of the Ethics Board may call witnesses to testify, question witnesses, present evidence, and review the evidence. The respondent and the complainant may also call witnesses to testify, question witnesses, present evidence, and review the evidence. The Ethics Board may consider any evidence of a type commonly relied upon by reasonably prudent persons in the conduct of their affairs. After the close of the proofs, the respondent or his attorney will be given an opportunity to make a brief closing statement. The Ethics Board may render its decision on the record or in a written opinion at a later date. Uh, at this time, I am now going to uh, read uh, the filed complaint that was sent to us. <clears throat> this is the complaint. Uh, it was a letter uh, dated November 15th, 2013, sent by uh, Douglas Malma to uh, Michael Holmier, the city attorney. Uh, myself, the city manager, uh, and Linda Kent, uh, human resources coordinator, uh, regarding ethics violation complaint. Uh, dear Mike, Marcus, and Linda, with this letter, I am notifying the city of Cadillac that I am filing this written complaint pursuant to the city's ethic ordinance against Lieutenant Detective Todd Golnick, who, without authorization, deliberately utilized the city of Cadillac's logo to become a key part of a political campaign whereby the appearance of his actions represented the city of Cadillac as an endorser of the mayoral candidate race. A second logo on the same letter also misrepresented the poem's involvement in the endorsement. Misuse of our city logo was deceptive, dishonest, and fraudulent, and may have affected the course of the mayor's election. I do not believe there was a vote in the union and that the information Mr. Petcher received from Captain Matt Wolfile is untrue and being contested by a union grievance procedure at this time. I have a reasonable belief that an ethics violation has occurred as well as personnel policy violations that should be investigated and followed through with at your earliest opportunity. This ethics violation complaint is separate from the personnel issues that were also violated and I would request that both areas be fully investigated and that proper discipline be handed down following the investigations or actions taken consistent with the ethics ordinance and personnel policies. Please receive this letter as a formal complaint and do not limit your investigation to my specific concerns with regard to the city logo as I'm sure you will find that the scope of your investigation will widen. Thank you. Uh, sincerely, Douglas Malman, City Council Member. Uh, after Receiving uh, that complaint, the Ethics Board did conduct an excuse me. The Ethics Board conducted an initial investigation, as required by the Code of Ethics. At a public meeting held on November 25th, 2013, the Code of Ethics Board determined that there is a reasonable basis to believe that Mr. Golnick violated the Code of Ethics. The Ethics Board found a reasonable basis to believe that Mr. Golnick violated Section 2-367, Use of City Property and Resources, and Section 2-368, Political Activities. This conclusion was based on the complaint and the Ethics Board's initial investigation. The Code of Ethics Board informed Mr. Golnick of this complaint and scheduled this hearing. Mr. Golnick was advised in writing on the date and time of the hearing was encouraged to attend the hearing and was advised of his right to be represented by legal counsel at this hearing. 
I know for the record that Mr. Golnick is not in attendance, and I was advised this morning that Mr. Golnick did uh, submit uh, vacation uh, overnight uh, and is not and is not here again today. Before starting uh, the hearing, the Ethics Board wishes to make clear that this hearing is not about a collective bargaining unit's rights to endorse a political candidate. The Ethics Board uh, does not wish to interfere with such endorsements or limit the free speech of collective bargaining units. Rather, the focus of the complaint in this hearing is an allegation that a city employee used public resources in a manner contrary to the Code of Ethics. We also wish to make clear that although any alleged violation of the political activities section of the Code of Ethics necessarily relates to politics, this, this hearing is not about union activities or political affiliations. Again, this hearing is about, excuse me, again, this hearing is about an alleged misuse of public resources. With that, I invite the complainant or his attorney to make a brief introductory statement followed by the respondent or his attorney. And before that takes place, uh, I am going to ask our court reporter uh, to administer the oath accordingly uh, before any opening statements. So. Okay, and who might begin with? Uh, the complainant, Douglas Malamuk. Do I need to stand up? Oh, you may stay seated, that's fine. All Please right. raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the whole truth? Yes. and I did state that in the letter in the personal policies. There's also violations and uh, doing my homework on this one on the uh, City Police Department general orders and work rules. <clears throat> so there's three areas in addition to violating the state law on political activities by public employees. But first of all, I want to talk about intent. And then I want to talk about timing. <clears throat> intent means that that's something that you purposely did. You were, did it intentionally. And I want you to look at that evidence and see if you can see a parallel here. The other thing is timing. Uh, the timing of this notice in the paper where no rebuttals, nothing could be done, take a look at that. Because that also points intent. First of all, let me talk about past practices. Past practices of the city have been, let's take the prosecutor's race two years ago. Mr. Golick was contacted <coughs> by one of the uh, candidates, and he stated that they could not, either union could not endorse, they could not endorse a political candidate because it violated not only their rules, but also the city policies. So, past practice says we cannot do that. <coughs> Second thing is, on the millage campaign, the road millage campaign, I purposely talked to Mr. Petcha, and I talked to Captain Wilfile, uh, Council Member Stevens was there. Uh, both of them stated they could not endorse a millage because it violated the personal policies, the political <coughs> um, past of, of endorsing candidates, or millages and support them, even though it was for the police department. That's past practices. Second area I want to talk about is not only the ethics, <coughs> using the computer, using city time to do uh, political activities, uh, filing overtime, uh, political officials talking with other members and individuals during work hours. I want to point that out in the ethics 
and section 27 use of personal property and resources and the use of personal property computers he did at his personal convenience and the benefit of this campaign or their campaign <clears throat> under personal policies section 4.1 personal use of personal property now i've shifted to personal uh, personnel policies section 4.1 personal use of city property this is worded it says unless he's given permission ahead of time by the city manager he cannot perform that activity section 4.4 of the personnel policies point out also political <coughs> activities in this section you cannot have personal statements that can be construed to be city statements or the use of a logo so it is there it is in the books it's part of our personal policies it's the way we've dealt with things before second thing is is in your personal policies you can also look at section 3.2 page 6 discipline area actions on offenses it's outlined it's clear section 4.4 i've already mentioned on political activities <clears throat> third thing i'd like to mention is <clears throat> The general orders and work rules, Cadillac Police Department. It was done on 12-16-2013. It cannot be construed, excuse me, 9-6 on 2013. If you go to the city policies, and I have the policy manual right here, you will see on page 9, and it's outlined on political activities on 5.37. It outlines exactly what you can and cannot do. I can read that to you if you wish, uh, but I choose not to do that. Um, I will highlight it. It says, personnel are prohibited from using official capacity as an employee with the department to influence, interfere with, or affect the results of an election. 5.37. You turn to page 10 <coughs> in the general orders and work rules, you will see another statement that says, uh, let me hear, personal statements and appearance. Personnel should not publicly criticize, ridicule the department and guidelines, personal or by speech, writing, or any other expression. <coughs> Discipline is recognized as with a re regardless <coughs> uh, disgrace of truth. Personnel should be personnel should not address public gathering or appearance of radio television prepared articles publications or correspondence to the newspapers periodicals it goes through the whole thing without approval of the <coughs> department head and city manager if you go down to page 13 electronic use of the computer it outlines exactly what it can be used for it cannot be used for unauthorized inappropriate or unnecessary is prohibited and you cannot use that for uh, personal use which it was if you turn to page 14 violation of the rules reporting a violation <coughs> personnel should not commit any act which constitutes a violation of written directives from the department and all these were approved the last thing I want to mention, and it is mentioned in the ethics, is Act 169, and that is a state act, and it prohibits active engagement and permissive, permissible activities on hours prohibited on political campaigns. Last thing is that it was difficult to obtain, <coughs> but I did obtain the bylaws of the association and I want to point out that um, it states very clearly in the bylaws on what they're to do and what they're not to do I'm not going to read that but it states very clearly their purpose and the purpose is not political activities if the city recognizes that as a legal bargaining unit they should have a copy of that <clears throat> I can't imagine that they wouldn't but it also, it states in there, and if there was a vote, I would like to see the minutes because I doubt it complied with their bylaws. I've been a union person through AFT with the city of Cat with the 
the uh, intermediate school district for 25 years. I sat on that side. I know what you can and you cannot do. If I <laughs> took it upon myself as a union official, and I was a building rep, and put the logo of the ISD uh, next to our logo, and supported a board member that was running for the ISD school board, I know what would have happened. And in talking with three, four, five different unions, and I could name them, communications, uh, AFT, MEA, <coughs> this is not allowed. This is not allowed. Thank you. Thank you. This would be an opportunity at this point um, for introductory comments or statements from the respondent. As mentioned earlier, uh, the respondent is not present. Uh, Mike, uh, would you then, would we then close this part of the... Uh, well, we can certainly move on to, um, I suppose, the um, board's role in this, which um, will be or can be uh, the introduction of evidence. Um, some of that evidence we've discussed at prior public meetings um, where this board... Um, Can you walk us through that? Sure. Um, I'm going to, at this time, I'm going to mark um, these exhibits. Um, this is uh, Board of Ethics Exhibit Number One, which consists of an, a uh, table of contents and tabs A through K. A uh, copy of, of that has been provided to both uh, complainant and, uh, and respondent. And I think it's important to uh, walk through um, some of the materials um, that the uh, board um, found during its investigation. Um, but one thing I, I want to make clear, um, just so there's no confusion, um, the, the scope or authority of this board pertains to the ethics ordinance. It does not go beyond that. Um, so in terms of, of other policy violations, um, that is not within the scope of this board's review, um, nor is this board um, empowered, um, in at least my belief, to impose any discipline. Um, we are a recommending body, um, and so if we have to do two things. Um, one is first determine whether there was a violation um, by a preponderance of the evidence, and two, if there was, uh, then make a recommendation as to sanctions or possible sanctions that should be imposed. And then those are carried out in the normal course of discipline under the, the city's other policies and procedures. Um, but it is not within the purview of this board to examine any other policy violations either uh, general policy violations or specific policy violations with respect to the uh, police department. At least that's my understanding of, of the ethics ordinance. Second, um, as Marcus, as you indicated, um, this issue has nothing to do with the endorsement, per se. Um, the union uh, and its members have an absolute First Amendment right to endorse candidates for office. At least that's my opinion. Um, the manner in which they chose to do that, um, too, I don't think is within the uh, purview of this board, um, and I don't think it it really is within our authority to uh, determine whether or not they were, that the union was in compliance with their bylaws or had a meeting or voted at a meeting. That certainly may be an issue for their membership, but it's not an issue for this board. Um, and my, again, my opinion is it is outside the scope of our review, and so I, I don't want to, to look at that issue. Um, however, what, what is within the scope of this board's review is the ethics ordinance. Um, and as we have discussed at our prior meetings, um, there are two sections that 
of the ethics ordinance that seems to be implicated by um, not only the uh, complaint or the allegation, but also then by our, our, our investigation and what we found during the investigation. And so I think it's important to run through that um, in terms of, of what they, the uh, ethics board has found. And so I'm, I'm going to start off um, using the March exhibit, exhibit one. Um, exhibit one, and, and both complainant and respondent have a copy of this. Again, respondent, um, uh, and we should know, uh, respondent, Respondent was, or I will know, respondent was um, properly notified of the meeting. I received a call from, uh, at my office from Jim DeVries, the business agent for the uh, union who accepted the documents on behalf of Mr. Golan, confirmed by email that he was going to uh, send both the notice and the documents I provided to him to Mr. Golnick and indicated during our telephone call that Mr. Golnick would be in attendance. Mr. Golnick um, has decided, for whatever reason, not to appear today. Um, that's certainly his right. I don't believe that we have subpoena power to force him or to compel him to testify um, or to present evidence. Um, we encouraged him to attend, um, but he has chosen not to, and he has every right to choose not to appear today. Um, so um, let's talk about then what we had found as um, part of our uh, prior investigation. And I'm going to start with um, really tab F. Um, tab F is the city's uh, use of internet and email policy. Um, and that policy, which is, in a, which is the marked exhibit now, uh, really speaks for itself. I'll give you my summary version, um, which is any and all computer systems, emails, um, or other, or other um, information technology sources, including internet that the city is supporting with city taxpayer resources is the property of the city. You have no, as the policy indicates, no expectation of privacy in your emails, in what you do with the city's resources in that regard. Um, that, that is probably relevant here because um, we, we searched the city's computer systems um, and found um, several um, documents located on the, the city's computer systems. Um, and as we decided um, at our meeting where we found a reasonable basis to believe there had been a violation, um, it appears um, from the documents and from our investigation um, that the endorsement letter um, which was um, created and that um, That endorsement letter is tab I um, that was also, the, the endorsement letter itself is undated, um, but um, was subsequently published in the Cadillac News um, and is, is located at, uh, at tab I. Um, that same document, um, according to our information technology records, was created um, on October the 27th, 2013, at approximately 10.37 a.m. Um, and then it was later modified, um, it appears on that same day at 11.32 a.m. That document then was then, uh, or endorsement letter was then again created on October 28th, 2013 at 11.52 a.m. and then modified um, that same day, same day, same time. The final document that was labeled um, Bilkin's endorsement final.pdf was created on October 28th, 2013 at 3.38 p.m. 
and last modified same day and time. Um, further, the, the information um, indicates that uh, the document was saved in a folder, um, a user folder listed as T. Golnick under my documents slash work documents slash CAPCOA and stored on the city's computer system. Um, respondent, Mr. Golnick, also has email uh, and the completed um, final or what's labeled as Filkins endorsement final.pdf uh, appears to have been uh, signed by Mr. Golnick, scanned on the city's copier called police copier, and then emailed to his email address from the scanner. And that was done on October 28, 2013 at 3.31 p.m. Uh, the city has retrieved those documents and has uh, also backed up those documents and placed them uh, elsewhere on the city server for preservation. And I want to I want to point out, I suppose, with respect to the um, the endorsement letter itself, there's been a lot of discussion. Um, and we've discussed generally the, the use of the logo. Um, and, and certainly uh, we've discussed um, the issues um, at our public meetings about um, the use of the logo and whether it was authorized or not authorized and whether it should be used or not be used um, in this manner. And I think we also know um, that, um, that after this, um, I believe the city, the city manager generally said, well, issued an order saying, if you're going to use it, you need my approval to use it. And since then, I don't believe it's been used in any way, shape, or form, as far as I know. Um, so we have the issue with the logo. Um, uh, certainly the logo constitutes um, city property. Uh, it's my understanding that the city contracted for, had the logo designed, and paid for that logo. Um, it's certainly city property. Um, whether it's been used in the past or not on letterhead, um, we'll, we'll certainly have to look at that and the impact on, on this hearing. Uh, my understanding is that um, Mr. Golnick, um, through, I believe, Use of the city's uh, copiers 
um, and other possibly other resources were used in order to create that um, endorsement. Uh, Mike, just to insert, the ethics board also looked at the correlation between on duty and off duty as well. Right, and and you have in your documents a. Um, uh, a payroll sheet, and this payroll sheet is for um, the week of October, it, it appears beginning October 26, it's actually two week period, um, beginning October 26. Um, October 26 um, is a Saturday, uh, October 27 is a Sunday, and as I indicated before, the information from um, your computer systems um, indicate that the endorsement letter was first created on a Sunday, October 27th. On that day, uh, Mr. Golnick does not appear to have been working. At least, um, he does not have any hours down for that day. Um, so, it appears, anyways, that Mr. Golnick was not on duty, but came into the city's um, offices, used the city's computers and resources to create the endorsement letter. October 28th is a Monday. Um, on that day, the payroll records indicate that Mr. Golnick was, had worked eight hours and had two hours of overtime on that day. Um, that is the day, that is a day in which he was working and again, um, our IT records indicate that he um, created what appears to be a final endorsement letter signed it, scanned it, and emailed it to his email account at the city. So we're really talking about that span of time on the 27th and 28th, um, and, and the creation of, of um, an endorsement letter during what appears um, to be a time in which he was being compensated by the city as a police officer. Um, just a couple last things that I, I want to mention that I think will be important. Um, and that is the, the endorsement letter and the, and the um, letterhead itself um, is problematic, I think, in this respect. Um, the letterhead is created saying that it's the Cadillac Police Command Officers Association. Um, which it certainly the, the association has a right to, uh, you know, it's issue letterhead, it's its own entity. The problem, um, as I see it too, is um, when we talk about use of public resources. The address listed on this letterhead is 200 North Lake Street, Cadillac, Michigan, uh, 49601. And the phone number listed at the top of the letterhead is 231-775-3491. The address, 200 North Lake Street, is the address we're sitting at now, which is City Hall. Um, and the phone number, as I understand it, is the police department's phone number. And so from a public resources perspective, um, the, it, it would appear that um, the association is using space in City Hall for conducting those activities, um, listing both the address and the telephone number for that specific purpose, and I think that's something that we need to um, take a look at and how um, that um, figures into the, the ethics uh, ordinance and whether or not we find then that there's a preponderance of the evidence um, to find that there is in fact a, a violation of the ordinance. Any questions? Um, I know we've discussed yeah. a lot of this in terms of our findings, but... I just wanted to add, uh, you know, for better or for worse, too, part of the part of prior public discussion that we had included um, you know, the, the sort of the use of time, um, given the, you know, some of the data uh, that we have before us, it, it shows, I guess, for, for uh, one purpose or another, the, the time that was spent, um, depending upon how you define it, could be rather de minimis. Um, yet, as a part of the, the board's discussion, the, the time itself really isn't 
isn't a factor uh, necessarily, um, as you had described, that um, the activity itself, um, whether it took you know, 10 hours or one hour, it didn't, doesn't really, time involved doesn't really have much, much impact on, on the action itself. And so I just thought I would add that. No, I, well, I think, I, think, I think that's right. There's no de minimis exception for using taxpayer resources um, in political activities. Um, so it's not, you know, generally, um, and, and, and candidates often um, get themselves into trouble because they'll use, say, a copy machine, right, who candidates running for re-election might use a copy machine to run off a quick copy or to fax something. Um, but it's it's clear that there is no de minimis exception for those things. Taxpayer resources um, should not and cannot be used um, in political activities. That that's um, certainly important with respect to I think the um, the ethics code. Um, the ethics code um, talks about political activities under 2-368, and what it says is any violation of the Political Activities by Public Employees Act, MCL 15.401 MCL 15 Ed Sec, or the Michigan Campaign Finance Act, MCL 169.201 Ed Sec, shall constitute a violation of this article and shall be subject to the sanctions set forth herein. Um, those uh, two um, acts will certainly be important. Um, and I'll, and I'll just, um, just for purposes of, of clarification, the, 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 with respect to the um, uh, public or political activities by public employees, there is a provision under that act that says you can't be engaged in political activities while you're being compensated for your job um, as a public employee. Um, from from the evidence that we have uh, received in terms of, you know, looking at your computer systems, the city's computer system, and comparing that to the payroll record, um, it appears that um, that Mr. Bolnick may have been engaged in a um, in a political activity while being compensated um, by the city. Um, that's the the documentary evidence that we have with respect to that. Um, so we're going to have to go through that and um, and and work our way to um, determining whether there is a preponderance of evidence in that respect, along with all of the other um, issues and items we've discussed here today, <coughs> and arrive at, at some decision. I, I don't expect that that will be today. In fact, I'm certain of it. Um, that we need to look at some of this information further, probably um, have another meeting and discuss what the information means, and then try and reach a, a decision on that issue. In fact, I, I was going to just read very quickly into the record on that note. Under uh, Section 2-391 of the Ethics Code, subsection B, the last statement states that within a reasonable time following the hearing, um, uh, actually, it says the city council. I'm not sure if that was a typo or not. Um, you're looking at that. You look at A. You're looking at B. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. It should be subsection A. Yes. Uh, with the, within a reading, we have two different processes based upon how a violation or complaint is fulfilled. One is if it's against a member of the elected board. Uh, and one is if it's against a member of staff. And so I apologize if I put any confusion out there. I was looking at the wrong subsection. Uh, but correct, under subsection A, it says within a reasonable uh, time following the hearing, the city manager, director of human resources, and the city attorney shall determine based upon the testimony and evidence of the hearing whether a violation of this article occurred and any appropriate sanction that should be imposed. And, and Mike, I think exactly to what you're stating, uh, we are going to uh, need to take a little time to look at um, uh, this information, uh, the transcripts from this hearing, uh, and then uh, meet again uh, as the ethics board uh, to uh, develop the final recommendation uh, for the for the process as laid out. Um, did you have anything further to add? Uh, let me uh, well, while you're looking, I'll look at Linda. Linda, do you have anything that you wanted to add? No, okay. at this time. <coughs>
was given due notice. Um, my understanding is he filed a vacation request last night and decided <coughs> for whatever reason to appear here today. Um, we will, I suppose, um, have to proceed on the evidence that we have um, that we have gathered, that we have marked, and that we have um, admitted for purposes of this hearing and determine whether there's that evidence meets the preponderance of the evidence standard as outlined in our general procedures. Um, and, you know, we'll have to make that determination in subsequent meetings. And so, you know, I think at this time um, it's probably appropriate to have um, Mr. Melema um, give a closing statement with respect to his position. Uh, we would have offered to respond at the same had he been here, but, um, and then we can close the, the hearing. With that, uh, do you have any further comments? Um, just want to reiterate once again, um, 200 North Lake Street is the city complex. In their bylaws, it refers to the headquarters of this association shall be located at Cadillac, Michigan, 949601, County of Wexford, uh, State of Michigan. <coughs> Does not have the address. So those are some things that you could look at. One is I go back to intent. I go back to timing. Intent is extremely important if you break the law, if you do it intentionally or not. I realize that sometimes if you do not, I can realize I was going 80 in a 70 mile an hour zone does not count. But if I purposely <coughs> do something, that, that brings the common sense approach into decision making. I want you to look at past practices, what the city has done before. It has never done this type of thing. And then the other areas, the ethics ordinance obviously is violated. Personal policies obviously is violated. And if you look at the Cadillac Police Department general order work orders, and this was approved by the city manager and council, you look at the violations there, there's got to be at least four to five of them. And I could assist you in that if you need it. And in closing, <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, uh, I have not found anyone in the private sector that knows that if you did something like this, the door would hit you on the way out. In the public sector, if the state police endorsed a governor's campaign or a governor candidate, <coughs> they know exactly what would happen. And in past practice, we have not done this. We have turned it down. And so I want you to look at the word intent. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I believe this will conclude the hearing. Is there any other board business this morning? No. Okay. I'll move to adjourn. Yes. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for attending, everybody. I appreciate it.